One of the things that I've recognized over the years as a coach is that maybe the most powerful thing that I could ever say to an athlete is, I'm sorry, I messed up, it's my fault. And you know, and, and you think, well, <laughs> that's kind of a weird thing to say as a coach. You know, as a coach, you're supposed to be demanding and authoritative and you don't make mistakes and the players are following you. But uh, we all know, because of the flesh, the sin nature that we all have, we all sin. We all make mistakes. Sometimes we say things we don't mean. Sometimes we uh, mean things we don't say. Sometimes we, uh, we're confusing at times, just as, as, as humans. And my new nature in, in Christ reminds me through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit when I'm wrong. And I think a coach's sincerity about who he is probably goes further with athletes, fans, media, than anything else in the long haul. They're not always gonna agree with you, but, but they will trust you if you are sincere. And, and that's really the, the lesson today. And the, the Apostle Paul says in 2 uh, Corinthians chapter 2, verses 14 through 17, and I'll just read this, um, but thanks be to God, who in Christ always leads us in triumphal procession, and through us spreads the fragrance of the knowledge of Him everywhere. For we are the aroma of Christ to God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To one a fragrance from death to death, to the other a fragrance from life to life. Who is sufficient for these things? For we are not, like so many peddlers of God's word, but as men of sincerity, as commissioned by God, in the sight of God, we speak in Christ. You know, there's a lot of people, I think, in life, and I think it's in our nature to want to get something for what we do. We want, we want uh, whether it's applause or money, pats on the back, some type of a fame. We Christians are very guilty of that. And so sometimes we, we make ourselves look better than what we really are. And that's why I started off by saying I'm sorry. I think when a young man that I'm coaching knows that I'm a Christian, that I'm no better than him, that I'm not a perfect man, but I'm a forgiven man, that the, that the gospel is alive and kicking through me. When that happens, there's the, he sees something that's different. I mean, he may not recognize it at first, but, but after some time with you, same with the media, same with the fans, over the long haul, they begin to say, you can count on this guy. He's going to tell you like it is. And telling him like it is is to, is to start by saying, I'm a sinner, I'm lost. But God left heaven and came to earth as God the Son, Jesus, and he died on the cross for me to forgive me of my sin. And, and with that, he gave me his Holy Spirit, the power to live a life of purity and honesty and, and, and being real in Christ. And, and I can actually have the nature of Jesus Christ living through me. It isn't me, it's Christ living through me, Christ's perfection. I'm not a perfect man, but he's a perfect God. And, and so when the perfection of Christ is living through me and they begin to see things that only God could, could be in character, you know, kindness and gentleness and love and honesty and all those things that come from God, Hopefully they'll give praise to God, not me. But when they see something that comes short of that, hopefully I will have the courage to say, I'm wrong guys. That's not, that's not who Jesus Christ is. And when that happens, you can pretty much know that you may not have all your athletes agreeing with you, but they will believe you. People begin to trust somebody who's sincere. They will follow a person who's sincere and, and yet authoritative at the same time. You then have earned the right to say, hey guys, that's not right. Hey guys, this is the right way to go. You have earned the right sometimes to get after a player by raising your voice and saying, you know what, I am not gonna stand for that. Even with a correction out on the field where it may seem mean, that player will trust you. He will know that you have his interest at heart because he'll trust that Jesus Christ is ruling your life. And I've always told my players this, and I said, look, you're, not gonna, you're gonna see good, bad, and ugly with me. You know, hopefully you don't see much bad, and hopefully you don't see much ugly. But just knowing who I am in the flesh, occasionally, I mess up. But, but I want you to know one thing. You know what, I could lie to you, I could, I could cheat you, I could say things that I don't mean. But I want you to know I answer to the Lord God Almighty. And while I'm all alone, I may have fooled you guys, but I'll never be able to fool him. And guys, I, I would just encourage you guys, you coaches out there, to be that honest with your players. 
I know in the day and age today where people are saying, don't, you know, don't bring up your, your religious faith. That's private. That doesn't belong out there in the meeting room or the, or the, uh, or the uh, athletic field. It doesn't belong at a public school. That's baloney. They got to know who you are. Even in the recruiting process, I let my recruits know who I am. I'm a Christian. And, and that first I want you to know about me. And after that, then you can really be, get a feel for who I am. Because if you don't tell them that, Coach, that's not integrity. But integrity is telling them the truth about who you are, that this is who you're going to be come hell or high water. And so a coach is sincere. It's, it is a huge factor for a coach. I think sincerity will be one of the greatest leadership qualities that you have. And whether you sometimes come out of it in a tough spirit or sometimes in a very gentle spirit, your players will begin to trust you and follow you. And most importantly, they will see the Jesus in you. That's who you want to point him to. Coach, I, I would just suggest that in your own mind, in your own heart, maybe set a, set a little time in each meeting. Maybe it's five minutes. I do this at the, at, sometimes at the beginning, sometimes at the end of every meeting that I have with my players before we hit the field. It's a sincerity meeting, so to speak. I may share a verse from the Bible with them. Uh, it may be a lesson from the scriptures that I want to apply to a, a real life situation. But I, I, want them, I want them to see the reality of Jesus Christ, the sincerity of Christ, and what it means to be real. I want that room of, of guys that I coach not to be a soft place, but a safe place where we can be vulnerable. We can be who we are. We're not putting up fronts and posture and, and all that kind of stuff. That, the, that you could actually be turned inside out in front of your teammates and, and have the confidence that, man, God made me fearfully and wonderfully, just as I am. Guys, I, I think that'll go a long way in your coaching. And, uh, and, and I would suggest maybe that you do something like that. Just pray about it and see what God does with it to, to become doers of the word, not just hearers only. Have a great week of sincerity in the Lord Jesus Christ. Starts with great time with Him alone. You and Him, never negotiate that. It'll overflow to your players. God bless you.